Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, it's time to get started. So today, um, we're going to look at a few things that have occurred in the past week. Um, and one of those things is that a few of you have been looking at um, the, uh, the example that we did last time, which basically was an example to help you with one of the exercises. And there, I actually made a mistake. So let's see. Uh, if I can find out, oh, right. So the, the mistake over here is in the implementation of the constructor. The constructor basically takes a, a name and should copy this name into its own character array that belongs to this class. Um, so what we did here and what I um, told you was kind of correct. The mistake, however, is a small one. It just shows that uh, it is very easy to make mistakes, um, especially here. Um, we have basically here um, the uh, task that we have 10 characters um, made inside an array and we want to copy all 10 characters in our own array. It could, however, be that uh, there are just a few characters that are really relevant. So therefore, we stop either until the second to last uh, element, that is what this i is smaller than 9 is about, or we stop when we see this slash zero, which is the character that signifies for us, for strings, that the string has ended and we don't need to print anything anymore. And the while loop, I'm going to just repeat again, um, starts when i is zero. So we start at the zeroth element, then we go to the first element and the second element until this or that condition is not valid anymore and then we stop this loop. So the idea was uh, at the end, we still add for the last element. So in this case, when we have 10 characters supplied and on the last character could be this, um, this terminator character, so this zero, or it could also not be, but it doesn't matter. If that is the case, we basically put uh, at it as a 10 character, this zero over here. Uh, the problem is that uh, we say that uh, i is eight, in this case, so we go from zero to eight, so we have already our nine characters. Then we still go in this loop and we say that the ninth character or the character at index eight will get the character that we supply as an argument through this uh, function over here. And then we increment i. So this incrementation means that when we leave this while loop and we've seen the entire array, until the very last uh, element, so we didn't see the tenth element or the element at position nine, then we don't need to increment this anymore because i is already nine or we are already then looking at the tenth element. If we increment this, we basically put um, the, the eleventh value of this character uh, array and it has only ten characters as you can see here and we basically uh, um, assign that the value of zero or of this termination character. So this is inherently wrong, even though it won't make uh, or won't give uh, directly any mistakes unless you're lucky enough, unlucky enough that um, not sufficient memory was uh, reserved or this somehow clashes with other variables. So the correct way of doing this is by uh, not re by basically removing this increment because this is already something you did in the while loop. So as soon as you enter the while loop, you basically want the next uh, element in this array to be assigned this value. Um, this is not a bad thing if you exited this loop beforehand, because if you did this beforehand because of this condition over here, so that the element was already a zero, then the next element will be also assigned this zero character or this, um, this uh, termination character. So this is not a bad thing. It is just that uh, when you really have 10 characters there or nine characters, plus a character that where it doesn't matter what it is, then it will actually change the 11th character and then go out of the bounds of this array. So this is inherently wrong. and This is something that um, needs fixing. So this is the concrete or the, the, the proper way of dealing with that. And I've, um, and I've seen that some of you basically used exactly this approach uh, for their exercise. So please look at this again and make sure that um, that's, that you fix this because it could end then two problems. Okay. The next thing that I had questions about was uh, the header guards. So if you add header guards, you 
um, so the header card should be for the C, the, the, the header file. So cat.h in this case, you usually add them complete at the top. Um, and just to re remind you what a header guard is or what they, what they look like. Um, so if not defined, this is basically a statement that is taken by the pre-compiler. So before it starts doing any compilation, the, when you enter uh, G++ or the, the compiler, it will go through all the code that you've written and puts it together somehow. And in that case, wherever in a CPP file you include a header file, like over here or over here um, in the main file, um, you uh, include exactly these contents of the header file into the CPP file and then the uh, compiler starts parsing all of this. Now, if this is the case, and you do this multiple times, so for instance, in the main file, uh, so cat example of CPP, for instance, you include the cat.header, and then somewhere else, so say that you include some other uh, class that also uses cat, then cat the cat.h is included multiple times, even though this is not necessary. Um, and if this is the case, uh, you only need to do this once and to avoid doing this multiple times, uh, you add this header. And we will usually um, have it as you know, the name of the, the file and then underscore h. This is, I think, the easiest. Um, there are some definitions that allow or that should, um, where you should also take the entire path or whatever this belongs to, but I think for our simple project, we usually do it like this. Um, so if this is not defined, so if we define basically a new entity, which we call cat underscore h, and if this is not defined, then we define it as such. Um, and what then happens is we continue to the next line, and then all of these contents of cat h are being read. However, if, it's, if we already did this, then at line one, we basically skip everything else. So if so cat underscore h is already defined, and then we go to the complete end where we then have to say uh, that uh, this is the, the end part of this if test. And this is basically you know, pragmas or uh, definitions that are not part of C. This is just for the pre-compilation. So these are not really variables as such. These are just constructs that are made for putting the code together, so to say, before this code is analyzed and put into machine code. And as I said, later when we have bigger projects where we have hierarchical constructs as well, this becomes really important. Because if you don't do this, then you might uh, get uh, problems when compiling all of this together. OK. So this is, this is just an example of uh, where we should have, because this is the cat header file, and uh, that's this header guards. OK. If you have questions about that, then now is the time. I don't see any. OK, so then we'll continue with uh, the example for today. I only have one example um, of another question that I could ask at the uh, exam. And this is you know, something that is fairly simple. Um, so four, I believe it is, yes. So the idea of this example is and this is uh, something I'm giving because I've seen that lots of people have basic problems with um, character arrays. And this is something that is fundamental that will come again and again. So therefore, I think it is fairly important to do that. And I, it also addresses the swap function that we've already seen in the, in the lecture slides. So I think also that is important to, to see. So the idea is very simple. Um, the explanation is really long, but let me explain first. So the idea is that you write a C++ program where you're given an array that has at least 10 characters. So we can assume that it always will have 10 characters or more. And then you need to create a function that swaps elements in this character. And the elements that need to be swapped are the second and the ninth, the first and the seventh, and the eighth with the ninth as well, in this order. So the idea is that you do this via the swap function that you're going to build over here then. Um, so the example, and that is also the way it is implemented below, is if you have an, um, an string, 
So this is this one over here. Um, and this string is already directly assigned, so we don't ask the user to type in anything. This is also why we don't have any C in um, uh, defined here. But we basically say here that there is this string or this character of uh, this area of characters. And in, we know already that this area of characters is, in this case, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, plus one because there is a zero being added, so L 11 characters long. So this is the user input string that we can take, and we need to swap the elements here with our own function that we need to implement here. Okay, so the idea here is really that we do first this, then this, then this. So in this case, we need to um, have a swap function, and we already have a start for the swap function over here, where we, take an L L where we take at least 10 elements of an array or an, uh, an array of characters that is at least 10 elements long, and we basically swap two of those elements. So we do need to just implement the swapping routine. Uh, so we could actually look at uh, lecture slides, what that looked like, but I think also there it's important to um, explain what swapping really does and the fact that you need an extra variable is here really important. So let's first look at how we're going to implement the swapping function, what this swapping function needs. What is given already is that this won't return anything. So it will return the void. Um, so it basically will do something and it will therefore be swapped. This is something that is a very important aspect of this lecture that we here in this case don't um, have a function where we just copy the values into a new entity, but where we basically pass by reference. And in this case, we already know that we need to supply a character array. And we know that arrays are by default passed by reference and not passed by value. So if we here in this case um, execute this function, and we, for instance, say that we start the first argument or parameter is our array, then we know that this exact array is being passed. Uh, for those that already, <clears throat> or hopefully there are quite a few that have seen the latest, la latest videos where we are already in chapter seven with pointers, basically this is a pointer um, to a piece of memory because that's what arrays are. And, uh, and we are exactly putting this entity in as, a, as an argument for our swap. So if we start changing inside swap this array and leave this function over here, leave this uh, swap function, then what we have changed will indeed have changed the exact um, pieces in memory that we supplied. So what we're only to also going to do then is also um, supply then the two things that need to be swapped. Um, so let's first solve that in our function. So we have our character array that we call in string. For instance, we don't have to supply really the size um, we also can assume here that the size of the array is at least 10, if not more. Um, and if it's more, the better. Um, and then we need to say which indexes need to be swapped. We can use integers, or well, let's go for shorts just to do something else. So we have our index, our first index, and our second index. And we need to uh, swap the values for those indexes in that string that we have supplied. Actually, in string, we can call it just um, string that we supply. This does not have to be exactly the same name as this one over here. Right, so let's first think about the swapping itself. So we have an array and we need to swap those two elements. Now, if we want to swap two elements, we basically need one extra variable that is of the same type of the things that we're going to swap. So it needs to be a character. And we call this temp, for instance, or temp car. So we have a temporary character that we will use to store uh, a temporary value or one of the values. The reason for this, and this is also something that I uh, have seen in the past year that people tend to have problems with, is that we can't just say the value of i1, oh, sorry, the value of string i1 um, equals the, the contents of i2. I mean, you can do this, 
But in that case, the value that was in string i1 is lost. It's overwritten with the contents of i2. So you can't do any more um, string i2 is in the, is, gets in the value of string i1. And this is, this is not possible, and exactly for this reason, we need this type of swap function. I'm not entirely sure if string is going to work because this might, well, actually it's probably going to work, but let me make this a little bit shorter. So we have our, um, our string, so we need this temp character. And in order to be able to do this, we, for instance, start with saying, well, we can actually do this, so that uh, the temp character gets the value of the second uh, character that we need to swap. Um, so that is now stored, and we can easily then override this, for instance, with the character that is now at um, index i1. And then uh, we can get that from the temp character. Okay, so we basically have three pieces in our memory. Two are part of our string, um, or basically the array of characters. And we take first the contents of uh, that at i2, put that into the temp car variable. Then we overwrite what is on i2 with what was on i1. And then we put on i1 the, the, the content that was at i2, but is now at the temp character. And that way we've swapped those two successfully without overwriting anything that we should not have been overwriting. Okay, so this is, I think, the more important thing there. Okay. Um, and that solves our swapping. So this should be doing exactly the swapping. The next thing that we should do is then look at what we need to swap. Let me just copy here what we need to swap, just to show what I need to do here. There we go. So first we need to swap the second character with the ninth character. Now what we can do here, and this is maybe another trick here, is that we can say uh, two and nine because we basically, in arrays, always start at zero. That means we need, for the first element, we need to use index zero, and for the ninth, we need to use index eight. And, that's, and this, we need to do three times for the first, which is, um, sorry, what am I saying here? The second is then uh, one, the ninth is eight, the first is then zero, the seventh is six, and the eight is seven, and the ninth is eight, as we have it here. So in this case, we swapped the first with the ninth, uh, the second with the ninth element, the first with the seventh element, and the eighth with the ninth element, just as asked, uh, as was asked above. And when we do that, we should um, see exactly um, what, what is done. The rest is kind of given already in this, uh, in this question. So we give it here the string ubiquitous um, and we should see to weak Wii U boss, right? So this, this has basically been shifting or swapping these two characters. If we do that, so let me check that out. So if we compile that and execute what came out of that, we get indeed what we asked for. Okay. Okay, there's, there's a question. Why um, did we not use a single quote for the character? Let me see what is meant by this. A single quote for the character over here is, I'm not sure where we use a single quote here. Um, if this is the case, if this is the question, um, a double quote is for strings, a single quote is for one character. So in C, uh, we can uh, never, I mean, basically in C, if we provide something that is with double characters and provide even one character, then this is the equivalent of having an array where the first element is um, this character S and the second element is a zero, or as we know it, this um, this terminator character. Okay, so this is, this is these are two 
completely different things. Um, so, so this over here is the equivalent of this over here. It is something special and it is hard to understand because underlying a representation of things is sometimes very different. So uh, another thing is that this uh, single quote S, for instance, is in essence just a set of eight bits of you know eight zero and ones in a particular order and you could also see this as a number for instance so there is such a thing if you uh, if you happen to have heard about this is called an ascii table which basically maps every character that you can write every basic character that you can write so not just the characters like an s but also a question mark for instance or other things it maps this onto a number and this is exactly this representation so in essence, this character, as we've seen, is an 8-bit number. And in C, we can represent this by the single quotes with the character that we want to display. And most of those 8-bit numbers are, can be displayed. Some of them can't be. So we have this escape character 0 here, um, because it's not something that you can really display. And this is exactly a 0 as well, for instance. So, so this is something that is not easy to to get used to and i think for an introductory course like this it might leave people a little bit in a gray zone still but it's important to understand that if you have this string you basically have an array of characters and where the last character is this termination character so that later if you would then have out with um with a string with a particular string what you would have here is actually a piece in memory where you have uh, the character H, the character D, the character F, etc., all the way until the character H. And those are all cars, so eight bits um, pieces in memory. And then automatically, because of these double quotes, there is this thing over here added to it. So what happens is when we have this in our code, the compiler replaces this with an array of this amount of characters plus one where the last one is automatically added and is automatically set to zero or this termination character. Okay. Okay, the next question is, in string is declared in the main, yes, and swap has no return. Now, how is the variable working here? Is it global? Uh, no, it is, um, it is, and it is a very good question. So in this case, we have in our main function something that exists as soon as you enter main and um, start defining the string here. So on line 30 here, we say that we have a, uh, an array of characters that we immediately set to ubiquitous. This is, I think, 10 characters plus the 11th, which is in the terminator. So at this point in time, we have this string created in memory somewhere. So we have this string of 11 characters or this array of 11 characters somewhere in memory. As soon as we uh, execute swap over here, we supply within string actually a pointer to that, that memory spot. And that still exists. So this over here is only destroyed when we return from our main function. So this main function could also be just another, uh, another function that we would have um, that is then called by our main function, for instance. But at this point in time, we know that in string is somewhere reserved into memory, and that this is a, um, an array that exists. And since this is an array, or basically a pointer, um, uh, that, uh, or yeah, a pointer, so to say, um, we know that we, uh, when we change something over here in our swap function, that this is actually also being changed whenever we leave swap. So we're not going to copy this uh, 11 characters into a new array of 11 characters that suddenly is only valid within this function. And we leave this function, these 11 characters are freed up. This is not how this particular thing works. The fact that we say here that this is an array means that this array is not copied, but that we take this exact array as it was when this swap function was uh, executed or what, when this statement over here occurs. So it's not a global thing. It is something that lives uh, within the main function and that is in global memory, as you can say, but it's not a global, um, a, a global variable or a global array. Uh, that would be something if we 
uh, define it over here. So you could also have done this over here. So we could have set here character in string uh, equals etc. Um, that would be a global variable, uh, but this is not necessary here. We can basically create here a local array as uh, a variable, and we know that it lives from here all the way till here. And if in the meantime we pass this array as an argument from a function, then we know that this function can take this, that this is valid, that this is a piece of memory that uh, exists, and that if we leave that swap function, and if we have changed anything in this array of characters, that this changes are um, still remaining because we didn't copy these 11 characters. We actually are working with exactly these 11 characters as they are. This will become a little bit more um, clear, I think, as we go through chapter seven. But also there, I warn you that chapter seven is very important to understand the concept of reference and the concept of pointers. Um, but I think the only thing that you need to really understand here, and this is only something that you can just try out with things, is that if you pass at the moment uh, an array, that this array is not copied, that this exact array is taken by this function. And if you change things in this array, that these changes remain as soon as you exit this function. Okay, the next question is, if we define the size of the character array at the start, we can't assign a shorter string to it. But when we use a for or while loop, the same is possible. How is this possible? Um, I'm assuming that you're um, saying if we define the size of the character array at the start. So if we assign here the size over here, so um, and we can't assign a shorter string to this. So okay, so I assume if you say if we had here um, in our function. Uh, for instance, five, and in that case, you um, okay. This is not the same. I mean, this is. Um, I, I, would, I assume that the the problem is actually with this um, this over here. So, if you would have a shorter array over here for the name of our cat, for instance, um, in that case, if you just assign, or if you would assign here a new um, character array. So like a temporary character array, for instance, um, that is 12 long, then you can't assign it straight to, to name. I assume that is the case. Or um, you need to have the for loop or a while loop in this, in this case, I think is the question. Um, and the reason is exactly because um, those, I mean, if you have a piece in memory that you attach here and this piece of memory is only five characters long, then you can't assign uh, an array that is longer to this array, first of all, because these are, I mean, in that case, you would be copying um, pieces behind these five characters, so six characters if this was a string, for instance. Um, and this is, this is inherently uh, an error in C and C++. Um, I, I think I'm not, that, I mean, basically, please um, detail this question a bit more, I think, or if you have a bit of code, then just write it over here in the chat. Uh, but I think this is what you meant. The next question is probably going on. That's when I define a character array and assign a string to it, it returns me an error. So here's the example. So if I have a character array 70 and this array um, equals anonymous, um, then it doesn't work. I have to use a while loop. And yes, this is, this is indeed true. So basically the fact that you can assign um, while defining an array. So here in this first line, uh, character array of length 70 over here, um, let me write over here a bit so I can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. So if I have carry of uh, length 70, for instance, and then, then I could assign um, either the hard way by saying this is, you know, where I say uh, a comma, and then something else, R, et cetera. I would have to do this for 70 long. I can do this very quickly by just saying um, test, for instance. And this is possible. Or in this case, I could even do this automatically by saying, you know, the compiler should figure out how many characters this is. This is in this case four characters plus the one terminator character, so it's a length five. Um, and these are things that I can do in one go, and this is possible, 
because the compiler at exactly this line will know everything already that it needs to do for this. The problem is when I don't do this and I have a character of say 10 uh, or an, an array of 10 characters and then I assign later this to a particular string, then what happens essentially is that I, I have a particular string where I have test for instance and uh, where, I, where the assignment operator over here is different from the assignment operator over here inherently. So I assign here an array of length five, one, two, three, four, plus this terminator five, uh, to a um, character array of length 10. And there are two problems here. First of all, we have an array of characters, so we can't have an assignment there. So this assignment is where this would already create an error. But say that this would be um, a, a C string or something else where the assignment would be uh, possible, then this would probably already have a problem because the length of the, the array would be different. So also there, there would be a problem. Um, work. Yeah, so you have to in that case, and the reason, I mean, so the reason in short is because this assignment is not defined for an array of characters. And when we, uh, from, Next week on, use basically a string library. You do have this operator available. But then it's important that you don't define this as a, an array of characters, uh, but that we immediately define this as a string. Um, and that is where uh, an assignment operator then suddenly is possible. And this is because somebody for us um, created this operator and redefined this operator as something um, that can then uh, copy an array of characters into this new array of characters. And how this has been done is uh, shown um, conceptually in chapter seven. Okay, then the next question is, I try to assign a string of shorter length to a character array of, of that, because this is a specification of the earlier question, but then an array row saying that one can't assign a constant character array of shorter length to a larger array. Um, and um, so you try to, so I try to assign anonymous to a character area of size 70. And this is exactly the, the, the explanation that I just gave. Because this is a character array, if you, uh, I mean, basically assigning an, a whole array straight away is not possible. So say that this is an integer, right? In this case, um, I can't just say that uh, this array equals, and then we somehow, from other um, programming uh, uh, languages, you, prob you could do this. You could just say that this is you know, 12, 23, et cetera. This is not possible in C. You can't immediately copy an entire array into a next array. For that, you need to define a little bit more and then you need to create libraries such as, you know, you basically have a vector, for instance, or a stack or something else that does exactly this. And I know that this confusion is uh, increasing uh, if you, for instance, are used to languages like Python, where this is possible. In C, this is not possible because we look at everything as a piece of memory. And there is no such thing that allows us to say, copy the entire, um, um, array that we here define as this, this, and this, for instance, into this array that we define here of length three, for instance. This is not possible in C. For C, in this case, you need to use a little bit more. And C++ allows you to then uh, create certain constructs where you can do this in one go, uh, but for that you need to, do, to use those. And with basic C or C++, um, this is not possible. And the same goes for characters. So this is now an, an integer array, but the same goes for characters. Um, and for characters, for instance, there the solution is to use string and to use strings as such. And we've been doing this already uh, whenever we've been uh, outputting uh, strings to the output to the console, for instance. There we constantly created uh, constant strings by doing this. Um, and this is nice and easy, but this is kind of a construct on top of C and C++, um, and for that we needed to include a certain library to allow us to do this. So it's all very low level, but I think this low level-ish part can actually be 
very insightful because then you know what actually happens in the background. So when you then see I have an array of characters or I have an array of integers, then a piece of memory is reserved for me. And if I have to copy one piece of memory into another uh, piece of memory, then this is not as trivial as it sounds. And there often lots of problems occur. But if you then know that uh, this is not trivial in C or C++ as such, unless you use a library that exists, I think um, this might be very helpful. OK, any other questions? Um, for exercise one, we have to check the length of the name array. Uh, like your provide test, it returns five to. OK, so no, you don't have to. Uh, so what I meant with this, so this also cre created a bit of confusion. Um, so what I meant by saying, uh, take care that, uh, or I think I'm not sure what, what exact phrasing was in the assignment, but you should make sure that the length uh, of the area is considered, meaning that you have to not go over the bounds of the array. So if the array is of a certain size, you should make sure that it doesn't go over this. Um, this particular bound. And this is exactly what we have over here, for instance. So if I have defined here an array of 10 elements, then I make sure that I um, stop when this, um, this is crossed. And in this case, we stop actually one earlier because we assume that users um, give us a name that is a string and that therefore is always adding um, a zero at the end. So this tenth element over here we assume to be a zero. If it's not, then something happens um, when calling this constructor over here. Um, and one way or another, we basically stop before that. So we don't have this error that we suddenly access the 11th character. In fact, we had this over here, but you know, um, this is what is meant uh, in the assignment. String copy will work here, but, and this is, I think, um, the danger if we start using um, you could also use memcopy uh, if you know about that from uh, a previous C course, for instance, or other things, is that um, there are inherent um, uh, things happening in the background that you don't, don't know about. I think if we clearly show here what is happening, that a string is nothing more than an area of characters, I think then you've understood what you need to understand for the exam. And of course, you can then uh, know that there is a string library where you can copy one string into another, or you could also concatenate strings. Um, that, is, that is very helpful. But this is something that we will now see with, for instance, dynamic arrays in the seventh chapter, where we basically can say we can reserve a piece of memory and we can increase this or we can resize this piece of memory. Um, but that is uh, upcoming. So I think this is something that will be a little bit clearer as soon as we go into chapter seven. And if you've understood that, I think you've understood everything I hope that everybody will learn in this chapter. So the fact that you have arrays, the fact that you have pointers and, um, and, and, and that this somehow allows you to manipulate things into memory. And that essentially these pieces in memory are just holding bytes, you know, that this is a character or an integer or a double, you know, that this is just interpreted differently, but you just have um, arrays of such. And if you have a class that is a little bit more of like an array where functions are included still. But I think uh, these essential things uh, make you understand what is happening in the background. Okay, the next question is an exam or an exercise 25. So the second exercise, the last or the current uh, assignment sheet. Um, there is an error in, I haven't got error in var. What does that mean exactly? And how can I find the error? Um, okay, there I'm not an, so the, I assume that the, the var is the variance function. Um, so, the, so we know here that there is an error, an error. Okay, so this is an output, I assume, yes. The output of the, um, of the, the check script, and the check script uh, tells you basically that there is a certain error, uh, error in how you calculate the variance. So try to see whether the variance is actually correct here.
Okay, so the next question is, how can we split the screen? I tried to go to given in, in the sheets, uh, but it didn't work. So the sheet seed, sheets is basically giving you a couple of, um, of key codes. Let me see um, whether those are, or how those are, are. So basically in the announcement on the Moodle page, you see several key codes. And then basically um, splitting them, for instance, horizontally or vertically, is with Control V and then a key code. And I think what some of you or what this question refers to is that you need to pause. So if I want to switch between this key pane and this over here, or this uh, pane and this pane over here, I need to press I press Control B and then the up arrow. Or if I go down, I press Control V and then the down arrow. If I want to split this into two panes again, this, or I win, if I want to add one pane over here horizontally, for instance, or I do this vertically, then I just do Control B, and then do, for vertically I do uh, need to do percent, so percent. Right, so I have here then one pane and here one pane, um, and switching or uh, creating one is basically just first Control B. And then you know, uh, releasing the keys and then pressing um, the, the the figure. I hope this is what is asked. Okay. Then the next question is: the check command helps us check the correctness of our code, but it gives us no idea about the indentation. Yes. Uh, shouldn't it be a help exactly? Yes. We are working on that. It's not that easy. So one of the problems with indentation checks is there are no utilities that we can just take. Um, and that um, CPP lint sometimes refers to um, wrong indentation type. So if you're using tabs instead of spaces, for instance, um, but there is no utility that we can use to show you that indentation is absolutely correct. And yet we want you to show you, or we want, uh, you to do indentation correctly because that would make our life a lot easier. If everybody starts, uh, and this is out of experience. So two years ago, we weren't so strict on indentation and then most code did not use indentation at all. And as uh, code grows in size, this code becomes really, really hard to read. You know, as an example, you could just take uh, this file over here, um, try to do this without indentation, and there's no way you can even, for a very simple uh, piece of code here, see what is happening where. Um, so in order to force you to do that, um, we basically force you to do indentation. And we also subtract points if you gravely uh, do no uh, indentation or the wrong indentation. And there's no immediate check whether this indentation is correct or not, but we are working on this. But this is, um, requiring lots of checks. So indentation is not as simple as it seems. There are some special cases, as we've already seen, for instance, with the switch statements. There you have a switch statement and cases that can occur there. And things are inherently recursive. So if you have a function or a member a function over here, for instance, then you indent over here. And then you can indent whenever you have an if statement or a while statement or whatever loop you have. And then in this loop, you could also have an if statement there. So this is um, going on and on and on. And doing this properly is uh, not that easy. So, but this is something that we are intending to build into our check statements. We get immediate feedback whether you uh, have a problem with your indentation or not. But we hope that with the simple slide that we have in the Moodle uh, page or at the Moodle site, we hope that this somehow helps you in showing what indentation should be. Um, can you up, please observe the, the cat codes to move? Yes, this is actually a very good point. So I will take note of that. So cat is uh, going to be uploaded um, today still into Moodle. Just, I mean, basically if you, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, um, uh, yeah, so this code is definitely there and I don't want you to type everything in by yourself. This is something that is often useless. Um, 
And therefore, yes, I will uh, zip it and basically put it on the middle sides, just as I yesterday did uh, for the, the game, the scroll game. So, so there, it's, it's very fair that you, know, you basically get this code and then you can see um, what is happening where. OK, any other questions? Mm, yeah. The exam dates, we're still working on it, and it's still as uh, hard as before because we need to reserve. So basically, I'm assuming that about, I think, 170 students will attend, and this will require um, logistically us to reserve bigger rooms uh, that are nearby each other. So I can, for instance, move between rooms, and we would have then at least two people per room that would do um, the oversight of the exam. So. But I'm trying to work as fast as I can. What I can already say is that it's not happening within the lecture season. So basically, the original idea was to do this at the last week of the lecture um, um, semester, or the second or the third week of July, I think. But it will be later, and it will be much later. So we're now already examining uh, second half of August or the beginning of September. Yes, the deadline of the exercise is extended to the 3rd of July. Um, this took a little bit because I was, I was checking a few things. Um, many of you have already perfect solutions for both exercises. In that case, you can immediately start next week with a new assignment. Um, the question that I expect now somebody to ask is whether the, the, the following uh, assignment, so Assignment five will be also postponed in deadline. I haven't decided on that yet, so you will def definitely have at least two weeks for that one, maybe even more. Um, but uh, those of you who already um, have solved everything can immediately start next week um, with the, the next assignment and basically enjoy their weekend as they have everything done so far. And for those of you that uh, had um, a, a, an exam this week, you could have, uh, or you have actually more time to systematically look for a perfect solution for both your exercises. That's basically the, the, the idea there. And also, that is not exactly clear whether there will be, for instance, a, a fifth assignment or not. Um, it looks uh, um, more like that we will have a fifth ex uh, assignment. Um, which will difficulty be a bit less than uh, this one and the next one. Um, but in, in essence, we want to basically see whether people um, understand their code or not. We can't do this in real life. This would be logistically impossible. So I think we need to get these 10 points that are still missing there from a new assignment. So we will probably have then a new assignment that you will have to work to work on. So in this case, I think it's looking more and more like that we will have um, a sixth assignment. So we have, with the next week's five assignments that are already set in stone, um, and then those 10 remaining points that you then uh, should get are then coming from a new assignment. And this new assignment, I think, will be something that will also allow you to prepare a bit more for the exam. The stream of questions has stopped. Oh, no, it doesn't, uh, or it hasn't. Um, till when shall we finish with the presentations? I'm not sure what the presentations here means. I mean, so this is, I think, the, the, pro the problem that we can't, um, yeah, exactly. So as other people say, there is no presentation. So there is no presentation of the codes. I mean, this is impossible. So we could um, use Zoom um, on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, but with the manpower that we have, this is something that is really, really hard to do. So instead of the presentations, the two presentations that you would have done, um, we will go for an assignment that spans the time from the semester end, the last week of the semester, basically, until the exam. So we will have a little bit more time for that. It will be also a simpler type of exercise, 
which will be in the vein of some of the exam questions. So I hope that I will that uh, that that is kind of like we will have these uh, weekly Zoom sessions. This is kind of a, a way for you to train yourself, still going towards the exam. Okay, last call for questions. What will be the last day that you expect to present the exam? I'm trying to do this as soon as possible. So at the last, so basically I said I to myself already this um, hardcore last date as mid-September. So I want to do this by mid-September. And yes, I, I've also seen your, um, your mail. As an exchange student, this of course means that you somehow have to stretch this. Um, and your uh, set of a particular group of people that have a problem with that. I mean, there's another uh, a few people that are still stuck abroad and that would have exactly the same problem. And for that, I think this is like a special case. We can think of perhaps an alternate solution. Um, but also that is under discussion. Uh, then an, an, uh, another one is, uh, can we represent an array? Uh, pull up instead of character A, yes, you can. So in essence, when you say character array undefined uh, size, this is exactly uh, the same as saying we have an, a pointer to a piece in memory that is of type character. And this is exactly what we'll also uh, see in the seventh chapter. So, so there, um, I hope that uh, everybody will then, for the next exercise, because this will be about pointers, uh, will then still follow this and I um, would encourage everyone to stick with this as you have uh, been sticking with the previous concepts of an array of strings for instance or a function these type of things um, to do this also with the pointers because I think if you do that then you have an inherent knowledge of everything that happens in the background can you use this in the current exercise um, yes I mean, you could do this, and I think this uh, does not generate any problems. Um, so I think this is perfectly fine. Even though I think the idea was that for this assignment, we use everything up until chapter seven, and you haven't seen this uh, uh, character pointer, basically. But this is fine. I think uh, you won't deduce points if this is what you, um, what you use. Um, I have a question regarding the main file. I'm not sure if you remember my question in the forum. Um, Could be, uh, or yes, I think. Do, do I, I, had, I, can, I can just uh, explain briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to set the functions in the, la in the second task to constant. Mm -hmm. And I had the problem that um, like in the, main, in the make file exactly, like when I was using this make command, um, there was an error. Um, I think no reference found. But then you gave me the hint to do it manually and then it worked. And then it worked. So I had a look in the make file, but I, I don't really understand like why it's not working with the make file itself. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't uh, check that yet, and I think let me check actually what the make file does. Because um, because the make file is not that hard. So basically the make file, if you look at it, it basically just has um, these four targets. I think part of your question was also maybe something new happens there, but I think nothing new happens there. Um, the only thing, so basically you have your stats.cpp file that is being compiled. You have your array class that is being compiled, so it requires for that the header file and the CPP file, and it compiles this array.cpp, uh, and then it links the two object files. Um, so the stats.o file and the array.o file into an executable that is called stats. So essentially, I'm not entirely sure what could go wrong there? Or what, why there would be a, a linking problem there? Um, have you tried cleaning and then um, doing the make? What do you mean by cleaning? So if you do, okay, so this is, this is the, uh, let me. Because this, this error only occurred 
uh, after trying to make these functions as a constant, like before everything was working fine. Mm -hmm. So you change something in, so maybe this is part of the problem. So if you change something, for instance, in the header file, but not in the CPP file, or the other way around, and um, the object file, or you, it, it tries somehow to uh, keep the object file, if, um, if it doesn't update this properly, then it could be, or that, that could be the problem. Let me quickly check. Um, so let me see here, where am I? Oh, but I don't have the... Password. Well, actually I should have the 25th example. There we go. So everyone can just look in the make file. Uh, just can't write or can't edit it. And this is actually silly because uh, it would be great, I think, to to immediately look at that as well. So this clean um, part over here means if you um, say make and then as an argument me uh, clean immediately, then it will remove all the object files plus the executable and then you start completely from scratch. Um, and if you then do that, if you just say make clean, which now won't happen because I don't have anything here, or it won't, oh, I do actually have a solution here. Let me check if the solution is correct. I do. Okay, so I have a, per a perfectly working solution here. But if I have make clean, I, I make sure that um, things work there. Um, so I, I would I would test uh, I would I would first test this. So if you do make clean and then do make, um, whether this helps or not. Um, I, I'm not sure. Like. How is this related to this? Do you, do you think it's related to the constant function itself? Yes. No, it's it's related to the editing of the either header file or the CPP file of the or the class. So so I'm assuming. I mean, this is something that I'm not entirely sure of. But uh, so normally this should work. I don't see directly an error here. So it basically, is a fairly simple example of just linking two object files, and then if uh, uh, it basically sees whether those object files are there or not. Um, if, however, you change, for instance, in your class array, uh, one of the two files, and it basically just um, ignores the fact that an object file needs to be refreshed, so to say, and you just do make yeah. again, then it might just do stats in this case without going for this or this. So somehow the program thinks that there's a constant file, for instance, in the .h file, but not in the .cpp. Exactly. So the, the error, so it's still an error, and it's on my behalf, most likely, because it's the make file is basically not reflecting um, the actual state. So if in the make file you basically, ref um, uh, if you, the make file somehow mistakenly thinks that an object file does not need to be recompiled, um, and it doesn't do this. So in this case, if the array.o is kept, even though the header file has changed, it will basically have then this exact this linking error. And the same goes for um, uh, for either side. So I, I think this might be the reason. Yeah. So so but but let's let's um, so basically keep on asking me this question via um, via email or via the forum because this is important because it might be that there is a slight error in the make file. Um, which you can fix by issuing clean. So if you basically, or I could actually also fix this now by saying, or fix this next by explicitly cleaning each time whenever you um, you make uh, by default. But this is silly. I mean, this should work in essence all the time. Um, but if this works with, if you execute make clean, um, suddenly then there is something that I missed here. That it basically the make, a command does not automatically refresh the object files that need to be refreshed. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious because uh, like, actually I was doing the same in the make, which was written in the make file just manually and then it worked, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. in that case, make um, did, not, did not detect that you changed one or the other. And I think this is the main problem. All right, okay, yeah. yeah. It could also not recompile the main file. I think that is probably what happened. So if you look at um, what we do in the in the make file, you basically, I mean, you probably um, it, it basically generates this, 
uh, in the make file, nothing changed. So in the CPP, in the stats.cpp file, nothing changed. So it probably recompiled the class file, but it, it didn't recompile the, the, the main file. And the main file still has this pointer that is not, uh, 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 or has this link or this puzzle piece that requires um, this array uh, dot, what was it? Um, so basically a member function that does not change anything, but uh, that is not exactly the same when you use const. Maybe that is the, the problem. If, if I remember correctly, there, there was re really the error in the, in the main file, I think. Yeah, so that yeah. is the, the, the problem, probably. So you changed the definition of the function in the class, and then this was already pre-compiled as uh, stats.o for the main function, expecting this uh, member function to be without const. And then suddenly it sees with this other object file that is then completely reproduced over here, that there is this const added. And this is probably, or I assume this is it, but this is something that we can test and then, and then see. So, so update this and I will actually change this problem in make file, just to, so that everybody has the, the same make file. All right, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Okay, this is not the case it seems. So basically, thank you very much for attending. Um, and as before, I will um, copy this video into the YouTube channel so you will be able to see what I've been doing. And as I said, I will uh, upload this CATS example. And then I wish you all the best for the current assignments and we'll see each other next week. All right, thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you, bye bye. bye.